Okie day. Well, we'll bring it in, guys, so we can do some Q&A uh, before we go and get some food for those of you who are here, or even if you're at home listening, you might want to get some food. Um, so, Natasha, there's some really cool questions that have come in. Um, so the first one we'll ask is, how can a church protect itself from being a place that causes harm to people? Mm. Yeah, what an important question. Um, and, you know, it's one of those kind of ironic questions in that, like, if a church is asking that question, then it's probably likely to be yeah. a place that, um, you know, is careful not to do harm to people. Mm. Um I think there are, of course, there are, and coming out of the Royal Commission and coming out of, um, you know, different denominations when all the, um, like, abuse scandals and stuff came out um, and the cover-ups and everything, um, there are lots of policies in place now. Everywhere has kind of a um, safety and protection policy, and so it's really important to, like, follow those and to be across them and for people to make sure that people know who they can talk to if they have something to report um, and all those kinds of practical things um i think on a more um like uh relational and spiritual level Mm. um i think there are red flags to watch out for in communities so if you're in a place where um, you're not encouraged to ask questions you're not allowed to criticize the people in leadership or um criticize the way things are done that's really problematic because you know uh, as I said earlier, Christians are people who like fail and, yeah. you know, seek forgiveness from yeah. each other as yeah. well as from God. Um, and so if that's not, if your church doesn't have a culture of that, that's really worrying. Yep. Um, uh, so I think you want to feel like you can, um, go and say, Hey, I'm not okay with this or yeah. what's, why does this happen? Or why does this not happen in our church? And for your leaders, um, whether that's kind of, um, like the elders of the church, the pastors of the church, the kind of Bible study leaders, that kind of thing, yeah. um, for them to, you know, be responsive to that. Otherwise it might be somewhere that is not the right place for you. Um, I think ultimately, Uh, the Christian stance should be one of humility. Mm. So if anyone from like the pastor right down to like everybody, um, uh, every member of the church, uh, like what it means to be Christian is to be submitting ourselves to God's word and to his will. And that means, you know, searching your heart, being willing to admit wrong, um, willing to be corrected, to be like, okay, I'm, you know, like there are ways that I radically need to change yeah, and yeah. my life radically needs to change. Yep. And if we always have that stance, you know, you don't kind of like graduate in the Christian life. You're yep. like, Oh, I <laughs> used to kind of have things I needed to change, but now I'm good. I've got it all sorted. Yep. Like there's always kind of blind spots and struggles that we have. Yep. And if we're open to God's word yeah. and to other people correcting us, yep. then that's the best guard against, you know, things getting really, um, yeah, exploitative and harmful yeah. other uh, people. That's really good. I like the humility comment. Um, how can the church show love to people while still standing for Christian values that are becoming more and more unpopular in society? Mm. I think this is a great question. I, I've it heard is. this from so many people. So, yeah. Because, you know, we're told um, in the New Testament that we are meant to speak the truth in love. Mm. And sometimes we're tempted to speak truth, to say true things like, you know, this is right and this is wrong or, you know, God is like this or you should do this or whatever um, in ways that aren't loving. And sometimes we're like, oh, I don't want to tell people truths that are hard to hear because that wouldn't be loving them. Like I want to kind of just say nice things and sort of like speak the truth quietly or not at all. (laughs) Um, And actually to love people, we need to speak truth and we need to do it in a way that's loving. And if either of those is divorced from the other, then we're not actually, um, uh, we're not speaking about a gospel of grace. 
Um, if you speak truth harshly, it's not really the truth that God's given us in yeah. his um, gospel because that is a message of grace. And so you can't deliver it in a way that's without grace, yeah. um, that doesn't love people and care about them. Um, and if you're just trying to be nice to people, then you're not really loving them because the truth is really important. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, you know, we talked about those stats earlier, the kind of um, 49% of people globally were like religion does more harm than good. And in Australia, it was 63%. Like that's a lot of people, right? But I think, um, you know, the flip side of that, that's kind of a like religion out there and Christianity out there. There are other stats such as... um, you know, one survey found that 88% of people who don't go to church in Australia say that um, they feel good about having a church in their neighbourhood. Hmm. 88% of people who don't go to church say they feel good about having a church in their neighbourhood. Yeah. How does that fit with like 63% yeah. of Australians being like, we'd be better off if there was no church? Um, you know, so I think there's often a distinction for people between like what they hear about in the news and in like kind of TVs and TV and movies and stuff. Um, and they're like, Oh, religion's bad. The church is bad. And then they're like actual local experience, which is their friends and family who are Christian. Um, the school they go to where there are Christian families, uh, their local church who does cool stuff in the neighborhood Mm. and has these services and cares about people. If you genuinely do care about people, people notice that and they can tell. So, so That's even true. if they're like, what you believe is like weird and there are some things I really don't like about it. Mm. If you love them, they can tell. Yeah. So I think, you know, the 63% is like, uh, oh. but the 88% you're like, okay, you can actually love people and it has yeah. an effect and you don't have to let truth go to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think as well, like we were talking about in, in the main podcast that there's a, there's room for your personal kind of story as well as a kind of a premise toward kind of going, Hey, like, this is why I believe this, but I still love you. All that kind of thing. Yeah. And also to like do life with people. Right. Cause yeah. then, you know, there's this thing, um, there's these American researchers who talk about, um, uh, the aunt Susan effect, um, which is, uh, kind of, a until recently in American life, there's been quite, uh, like they've done well in terms of living alongside each other, people of different religions. Yeah. Um, and a lot of that they reckon is down to the aunt Susan effect. And then there's been a lot of like intermarriage of different religions and, um, people who kind of go, Oh, I think those atheists or those Christians or those Mormons or those Muslims or whoever like are crazy. But Mm. my aunt Susan is that, and she's lovely. Like I like her. (laughs) So, you know, I think that kind of actually having relationships with people, they're like, Oh, no, you're okay. Even if I disagree with you, like the personal relationship really matters. Yeah, for sure. I've even found that with, when I talk to kind of strangers or people I don't really know that well, it's, I feel like, you do yourself a lot of good in the conversation, a lot of good if you just have some general chat and like you can just kind of get to know each other before you just dive into like, here's the gospel and here's the, why you're a sinner and all these different kinds of things. So people Well, and there's like, a question that people can tell if you actually care about them. So yeah. like if you don't actually care about them, then that's a problem. Like yeah. <laughs> you yeah, need yeah, to figure yeah. out how to actually, because Jesus actually cares about them. Yeah. No, that's a good point. I've got another question. Um, and this is probably a relation to what you've written in the in the um, uh, documentary. And it says, are you seeing change happen because of your message in churches uh, that are causing harm? What have you seen? Uh, what kind of change have you seen? Mm. Yeah, that's a hard one. I mean, a lot of the work that I do, you know, I kind of go somewhere and I talk or like we, you know, write something and it goes out into the void and we don't necessarily see what happens with it. Um, So sometimes people, you know, write to us or talk to us after an event and say, oh, actually this was really helpful or meaningful um, for some reason. And that's always really encouraging to hear. Um, But we don't necessarily know. I think um, uh, one thing that uh, I do find is that talking to people about things like, uh, 
actually we don't need to be defensive and angry and fearful that actually Christians can reach out to yeah. the culture around you and people are open to hearing um, like what you believe and um, you know, not always you'll get some hostility, but that's okay. Cause Jesus says, t- he tells you how to meet hostility yep. with blessing, with yep. love. Yep. Um, that I think a lot of people are really thirsty for that. You know, we're in this, um, people talk about culture wars a lot and um, a lot of Christians are like, Oh, the culture is really against us and they hate us. And um, it's easy to kind of retreat and get angry in return. Um, but that really feels really crap. Um, yeah. and I think a lot of people are like, oh, it's really, um, it's a relief to be given an alternative to kind of go, actually, yeah, we can be hopeful about yeah. the world around us and yeah. about what speaking truth can do, speaking truth in love. Yeah, um, yeah. because you know, Jesus is Lord. Yep. Yeah what I believe. Yeah, yeah, and sure. So, you know, we it's can really treat people like they actually might be interested in Jesus because yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he says they, you know, that yeah, you people will respond. Yeah, yeah, and you don't automatically assume that they're going to ignore it because of what mm. it seems like popular culture is saying about you. Uh, yeah, about the Christian faith. it's like it's kind of um, it's strange that children of the king would be afraid all the time. Mm. You know, do not be afraid is kind of is like what the most common command in the Bible. Wow. Don't be afraid. So I think whenever we are kind of acting out of fear um, and making decisions or treating people out of fear mm. and defensiveness, like we're probably not going to do the best job and it's yeah. also not going to feel very good or right. It's not feel so. genuine. You're going to feel apologetic the whole time. You're like, yeah, I guess I kind of believe it. And this is like, do you believe it? So, no, nah, it's good. Um, I've got another one. How would you work around talking with a non-Christian about your own good experience in the church, even if they think it seems naive? Um, I mean, I guess a lot of this is, you know how the Bible talks about fearing the Lord? Yeah. Um, and how that sounds a bit like, oh, we're supposed to be scared of God. Um, but actually, uh, you know, I think of it in terms of like, well, who do you fear? Are you afraid of what people think of you? Or are you afraid, like, do you really care about what God thinks of you, which really matters to you? Mm. Um, And if, like, you know, you talk to someone about what you believe or about church or um, what you think about um, any of the things we've been talking about, and they're like, that's really stupid. Um, That's kind of like, that hurts. Like, and you feel really crap and awkward and whatever. Um, But whether that is going to kind of cut to the core of you and really unsettle you is going to depend on who you, who you fear, like where you Mm. actually place your hope and your trust. So the more that we know God, the more that like I kind of go, this is the, this is the God I've trusted and it's his, it's what he thinks of me that really matters to me. It's actually okay if like, some people I meet are like, oh, you're an idiot or um, <laughs> you're really pathetic or I don't know how you like can you. believe that or yep. whatever it is, um, you know, that can sting at the time, but like it's not the most important thing to me. Yep. Um, I have, you know. My identity um, is elsewhere. Have, <laughs> yeah. Sorry? My identity is elsewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. So I think go to God um, yep. if that's you. Yep. Um, that's know cool. the one that you've trusted. And that will get easier. I'll see how we go. This might be our last one, but our, uh, there's a question on slavery. Our understanding of slavery shows that it is wrong. However, there are Bible verses that condone it. How should we interpret these verses? Mm. Just a small little question for you. Yeah, just an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so... There are some Old Testament verses um, which talk about a form of slavery in in God's Old Testament people in Israel. Um, uh, That's kind of a different form of slavery is one thing um, to what we would call slavery today. It's kind of like an indentured um, 
servanthood. So like that people would kind of for a certain number of years um, would kind of sell their labor and then they'll be free at the end of that if they're in debt. So there's kind of, um, you know, like there's a lot of commentary about that and what that is yep. in the new Testament. Um, you know, when people became Christians and you have this early community and a lot of the Christians are slaves, right? Because, um, the gospel appealed first and foremost to a lot of people who were, you know, to some people who were kind of successful or rich or powerful or whatever. So there were some of those, but also lots of people who were treated really badly by their society. And this gospel came along and said, you matter to God, you matter so much that here, this is what Jesus did. He died on the cross for you. Yeah. Um, so you could be saved. So a lot of um, slaves among others, um, women, children um, became Christians. Yeah. Uh, and the way that, um, uh, the Apostle Paul particularly writes um, about slavery in the New Testament. You got to like he's writing in a context where the Christians like they have no power. Like they're this tiny group in this massive slave yeah. empire. Yeah. Um, and so he's not going to write to them about like, well, you need to get out of your slavery. There's no way for them to do that. Yeah. Um, what he does is kind of way more radical um, in one sense in that he says that in Christ, in this new community that is the body of Christ, mm. there is no slave or free. That, that distinction doesn't exist. There yeah. is no male or female. There is no, um, you know, ethnic difference, Greek yeah. or um, Jew. Uh, so, you know, what he's saying there, and this is like a world that is so stratified, like so like everybody has their status and their yeah. place and that defines you. That is who you are. Yeah. It's like none of that matters. None of that even exists anymore. Yeah. And so in the church of Christ, you had people weren't ranked like they were brothers and sisters, regardless of their status or gender, yeah. um, whether they were a slave or not. And actually that belief is what kind of sows the seed yeah. for then over centuries. Um, and then later again, uh, with, uh, in the modern world to go, actually no slavery isn't okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you have these two kind of tracks, you have the kind of like, oh, here's what's going on in the like imperfect world that we're part of and that we don't have power to kind of change straight away. Yeah. And, you know, here's what the real reality is, is that slavery doesn't even exist. Like that's yeah. not your status um, as a person. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, really I think good. obviously Christians have like used those passages to defend slavery as well. Mm. Um, and nobody gets to be like, Here's the right interpretation. You know, we can only, uh, we can read the word and honestly, with all our hearts, even if it's inconvenient to us, yeah. um, seek to understand what God is really saying and what he's really like. We can yeah. seek to get to know God better mm -hmm. um, and figure out, therefore, how the world looks through that. Yep. But, you know, the Bible's like, uh, to use a kind of Narnia um, <laughs> reference, yeah. um, uh, it's not safe. It's not a safe book. Yeah. Um, it's not a tame lion, no. um, but it's good. Yeah. So that's really good, good luck. Yeah. No, that was a really good answer to that question. I do want to squeeze in one um, more because I think it's a question I hear a lot is that how do I love and talk to people about Jesus that are close to me that are very adamant in not wanting to talk about Jesus? Um. I would say that you should respect that, um, uh, that yeah, if people aren't ready, they're not ready. Um, and you kind of forcing something on them. Like Jesus never forces people. Like you kind of, yeah. if you read the gospels, he's very like, there are even times when people are like, Hey, I want to come follow you. And he's like, mm, have you counted the cost? Like, oh, I don't yeah. know. Like he kind of puts them off. He tests them. Yeah. He's not a kind of like top 10 tips for recruiting new disciples kind of guy. <laughs> um, yeah. He's very like, you know, you need to make this decision yourself. And I think we need to be really respectful of people in the same way. Yeah. Um, I think you really, really want to pray for them yeah. um, and good. you want to love them just yeah you know, be there for them because especially with the people who are closest to us, we're in it for the long haul, right? Like yeah, we're always going to be there. They're always going to be there and things change um, over time. And yeah. so just because they don't want to talk about Jesus now, 
It's, a good it's point. entirely possible that, you know, in a year or in five years or in 30 years that they're going to come to you and be like, okay, wait, I've seen how this plays out in your yeah. life and I'd like to know about this now. So, you know, don't, don't give up hope, but also you, it's not your job. You can't change their heart. That's um, true. So. I like that point. I never really thought about the, uh, the how it could change over time. It's kind of like, you need to know now, you need to know now. I mean, there's a certain ed- urgency to the gospel for sure, but mm. it's not like, uh, oh, I can't do it now, so I won't ever be able to talk to this person. So that's encouraging. Um, well, Natasha, thank you so much. Uh, let's give her a hand, guys. <laughs> we really, really appreciate you uh, giving of your time uh, to talk to us and answer these really uh relevant questions and to help us navigate these things so really appreciate you giving of your time um lastly how do how can we kind of support you like how can we get some of your resources and and what what's how can we help you yeah oh thanks um thanks for having me by the way this is really lovely um and i'm sorry i'm not there with you in person that'll be much more fun um for us uh so the cpx website publicchristianity.org we've got like a whole bunch of resources there are articles and like videos and the documentary is there and you can watch all the kind of segments and share them with people there's a you know the cello example is like in a little you know three minute video and you can share it with people um we have a podcast called life and faith um which is um weekly during term time um it's pretty fun uh so you can subscribe to that or you know check out some episodes on whatever podcast podcast app you use um yeah and like if you go to our website you can also like sign up for our newsletter which comes out every um fortnight and you know that way you can kind of keep up with the stuff we do and yeah um we'd love it if you would uh you know follow us on the socials socials. stuff yeah facebook twitter insta (laughs) that would be cool too thanks oh that's great thank you natasha and uh, for anyone listening, uh, if you like this, give it a like, give it a share. We, uh, we don't want to be famous, um, but we want this to be able to help as many people as possible. So until next time, I'll catch you later.